Good morning, DV family. Miss Aftiela here with some morning announcements. First, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you would reach to the foot, the seat pocket behind you, the one that you're sitting at, you're gonna find this connect card. It looks like this. We ask that you just grab it, fill it out with as much information as you're comfortable giving, giving us. We promise not to spam you. We're not gonna harass you. It's just our way of connecting with you guys throughout the week. On the back, there's a place for prayer requests. If there's anything you need prayer for, just go ahead and jot it down because we have an amazing prayer team here at the church that spends time throughout the week praying for everything on here. Towards the end of the service, there's gonna be a time of generosity. There's gonna be some boxes coming through. That's the perfect time to just go ahead and drop the cards in there. All right, so my first announcement is our midweek. If you guys have not been coming to our midweek on Wednesdays, you guys are really missing out. It's an amazing time of just some prayer, some worship, some discussion, and just getting to know people at our church a little bit better. And if you want more information, just send a message to our social medias and somebody will give you all the information you need so that you can join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. It's the place to be, guys. All right, so my second announcement is our food drive. Guys, this is amazing. We have about 15 bags already set up with food ready to go out. And if you just follow me over here, we have other foods. We, people have been bringing in like canned goods and we've got box pastas and we got soups. Guys, we could not do this without you. This is just an easy way to reach out to our community, to the people in Doral who need our help, to give hope to those in our area. So we're gonna keep on collecting food. So when you go to the store, if you see anything on sale, buy one, get one free, pick an extra one up and just drop it off here at the church. On Sunday, if you're not coming on a Sunday, just send a message to our social media and we will hook up a time to be able to get the food from you guys. Thanks again, you guys are awesome. That's all for me, have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you guys next week. Well, hello and welcome to our online DV worship experience. We are so glad that you have connected with us. If you're new, would you let us know that you're new by simply typing in the chat, I'm new? Those two words, I'm new. That way we can reach out to you, follow up with you, send you a free gift just to say thank you for stopping by. Listen, we are continuing to move as a church. It is awesome. We are right now having in-presence services. So we have in-person services at the moment every Sunday. This is being pre-recorded and then being broadcasted um, here. But listen, we want to invite you you continue however you feel comfortable you want to continue to join us online you can do that if you want to come and join us physically at the church you're welcome to do that as well but we want to encourage you regardless to continue to be God's hands and feet continue to reach out to people that need to hear and know about God's love with others we love that we are being the church we have just done a a um, food drive and impacting our community it's been a great thing but now I want to invite you now that we're connected we're going to spend some time in worship we're going to hear from God's word and we're going to just learn and being transformed in his presence so I just want to invite you right now to to get ready to hear from God and a word for you in this moment God bless you well hey everybody welcome back to our online worship experience we are so glad that you are joining us and just before we jump into the message for today I wanted to take a moment and just to say thank you to everyone who is helping make this online service, this DV online service possible. There are people behind the cameras, there are people editing, there are people making sure this goes online, there are people that are in the chats, people following up, there are so many of you involved. And we just wanna say thank you. I wanna say thank you for, you know, what a pivot we've made since March. This is something new for us and we've jumped into this and I just wanna say thank you for those of you that have been helping us. So many people have been impacted by your service. So we celebrate and I wanna thank you today. Also, before I jump in to part four as we wrap up our series today, uh, truth be told, I want to also let you know that next week we are kicking off a brand new series called Unstuck. Unstuck, and what we're doing is we are looking at those things in our lives that are limiting us from being everything that God wants us to be. 
and doing everything that God wants us to do. And I'm really excited. We'll be kicking that off next week. Also next week, we are starting our church-wide 40-day fast. And so we would love for you that are watching this to join us wherever you are and be a part of this 40-day fast. We're kicking that off next week, September 20th. So we'd love for you to join us. And you may say, well, what are we fasting for? Well, we're fasting for several things. One is we're fasting for things that God wants to do in our lives. Um, he still wants to do some work in us, transform us. And there are some things that are not going to happen unless we decide to fast. And so we want God to do that. And so we're going to fast for that. We're also going to fast as a church for just this cultural climate that we are living in today. And we're going to fast for healing of our nation. We're going to fast for the elections that are coming up. We're, we're going to fast for 2021. And that God would put us in the right posture so that we can be ready for what God has for us in 2021. So we would love for you to join us. It's going to be, I believe, a spiritually uh, next level that we're going to go to as we enter into this moment of fasting. And so I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I, I'm just excited about what God is going to do. So if you are going to join us, would you simply write in the chat, I'm in? Just type that in. I'm in. So that way we can follow up with you and we'll know who all is joining us in our journey of 40 days. All right. All right. So we're going to jump into our message series. Oh, yeah. Let me mention this, too, as well. We have been doing an amazing thing with our food drive. It, it has been awesome, and you're going to hear a little bit more about it uh, and see more about it, but how you can get involved, you'll be hearing a little later on, and you'll be seeing what we've been doing. This, of course, is pre-recorded, so you guys are watching this on Sunday, but on Saturday, we had a great outreach, and so hopefully you'll get to see some of the, the footage of what we did as well. So let's jump in. I'm ready to jump in to our part four. We're wrapping up our series here today called Truth be told in case you're just joining us what we're doing in this series of truth be told is what we're we're speaking to to those of us who believe in god and yet we live as if god isn't in our lives we we live our lives the way we want to how we want to and with really little or no regard of what god says to us or uh, wants to do through us and so in week one of the series we titled it i believe in god but truth be told i don't know him in week two we said i believe in god but truth be told i don't fear him and in week three we said you know i believe in god but truth be told i don't want to go too overboard with following him Today, we're going to talk about, I believe in God, but truth be told, I don't trust Him fully. I don't know if you could tell, but this week I went to the barber. And uh, it's not that, you know, in case you were wondering, you may be wondering, well, is that Pastor Abdi's hair receding? Is it all falling out? No, I actually went to the barber this week. But wouldn't it be weird if I go to the barber and I say, hey, barber, just cut this side of my head, right? I'll, I'll take care of this side and this side and the back side when I get home. But you just cut this side. The, the barber would, wouldn't he he'd just be like, uh, okay, that's a little weird. Why, why don't you let me do the whole thing? I'm an artist. I have, I have plans for your head. I can make it look and, you know, help you look even better than the way you do. And, and so, but we're like, no, no, no. Isn't that the way that we are with God? God, we could, you could have part of my life, but truth be told, I don't want you to have all of it. I don't know if I can trust you with the whole thing. That is what we're going to talk about today. And so the way we're going to dive in to today is by looking at a scripture in the book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6 and the version we're going to read today is probably a version you are not familiar with it's called the psv version and so i want to read it to you if you can follow along with me it's going to come up here on the screen the bible says trust in the lord with how much of your heart it says there with some of your heart and lean on your own understanding and some of your ways acknowledge him and you my friends you can make your own path straight that is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 in the PSV version. And PS, PSV stands for the Partially Surrendered Version. And 
it's not actually what the Bible says. You may be here and say, Pastor Abner, I've never heard that scripture read that way. Uh, is that in the Bible? You're right, it's not in the Bible. But isn't it the way that many of us live our lives? We, we just say, God, you could have this part, but I'm not sure I can trust you with the whole thing. That's what we're going to talk about today, the whole thing. How do we do that? You know, I uh, last year, I w had the privilege of taking my whole family to my hometown in New York, and it's really close to the Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls. And when I was there, I was reminded of this guy named Charles Blondin. A picture of him is coming up now. And Charles Blondin is, a, is the first person, I, actually on June 30th, 19, or 1859, he is a tightrope walker. And he was the very first person to cross the Niagara Falls on a tightrope. He's the very first person. This is 160 feet above tumultuous waters. I have seen that gorge. I've seen the power and the force of that water coming down. Actually, it's used to uh, for electricity purposes. It can be converted into electricity, and it, 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 it's what a lot of that surrounding area uses as to, to fuel their electricity. But he, he was 160 feet above this tumultuous water. He had to go 1,100 feet across the Niagara Falls. And when he did, the let me tell you, people, People went crazy and that picture when I look at that picture it's a pic I don't know about you but I am fearful of heights and so there's just something like a knot in my stomach when I think about somebody being that high with just that little tight rope walking across is crazy so he gets across it people are going crazy and he decides to go across it a second time but this time he goes across it the second time on stilts as if it wasn't bad enough to cross it on a little tightrope, he crosses it on stilts. He crosses it again a third time. And this time, when he crosses it, he stops halfway and he eats an omelet. I mean, I don't know about you, but I think this guy needs like new hobbies, right? I mean, he, he goes halfway, he kneels down, he cooks an omelet, he eats it, gets back up and crosses over. He goes back a fourth time to cross over, and he does it in a burlap sack, like a, a potato sack, like what you see with like sack races. He gets in a potato sack and he walks across it that way. Then he goes across it a fifth time in a wheelbarrow, no, no, I'm sorry, with a wheelbarrow full of potatoes. Maybe the, you know, emptied the burlap sack and he put the potatoes in the, in the wheelbarrow and he takes that and he goes across it, goes across it on the tight rope in, with a wheelbarrow and potatoes in it. When he gets across it, reporters, the press, they're going crazy. Great job. That's awesome. One reporter goes, pretty amazing. Um, I, I think that's incredible. How about you do it again, but instead of potatoes, you put somebody in it. And Charles Blandon, he goes, man, that's a great idea. You want to go in it with me? And the reporter is like, uh, I believe you can do it. But truth be told, I'm not sure I can make it. I trust you enough to, to put me through that. And it's so true. A, a lot of us, that's the way we are with God. God, I believe you can do it. And, and you know, this even bleeds into like personally, right? Like, like God, I, I believe in your grace. Um, I believe in prayer, but I'm not quite sure, God, you hear my prayers. I believe in grace, God, but I'm not quite sure that um, that mercy that you offer is for me. I believe in you, God, but I I'm just not quite sure that this is all for me. And I just want to say that if you're listening to this message and you're like, yeah, yeah, I can relate to that. I want to tell you that you're not alone. In this struggle of faith, you're not alone. Actually, in the Bible, in the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 22, we see a story of a gentleman, a, a dad, and his son. He goes to Jesus so that Jesus would heal his son, and he has a hard time believing. See, he had gone to his Jesus' disciples, and he had asked the disciples to heal his son who was demon-possessed, and they couldn't do it. And so after they couldn't do it, he goes to Jesus and he tells Jesus, he kind of explains the situation. He's like, Jesus, 
I, I went to the disciples, your disciples, to see if they could heal my son, but they couldn't do it. So I'm not sure if you're able to, but can you please have pity on us and help us? And, and Jesus looks at him and he's like, excuse me? I mean, he didn't say this in the scriptures, but he's like, if I can do anything? I mean, do you know that I breathed the galaxies into being with a whisper? Like, if I can do, watch what he says to him. He says, if I can do anything, he says, anything you see that word there anything would you say that word with me anything anything is possible for one who believes and immediately the boy's father exclaimed i do believe help me overcome my unbelief and i love this passage of the book of mark chapter 9 verse 22. um it, you know it's so interesting because one of the reasons i love it is because I see myself in this, right? Because my faith is flawed. My faith isn't perfect, and I have trouble at times. I struggle with my faith as well. And I believe this passage in God's Word, it gives me permission to believe in God and yet to ask Him to help me where I don't, to ask Him to help me have faith where I struggle trusting in God, to trusting in anyone, anything else than uh, myself and he says here the daddy says I believe but would you help me overcome my unbelief and I want to trust you God and I sort of do trust you God but would you help me because I have a hard time trusting you all the way and so what I want to ask you today is I want you to just get real honest and I I want you to just get ask yourself the question is there something in my life or what is in my life that i'm white knuckling that i'm having a hard time completely releasing it to god that i'm having a hard time completely trusting to god and i i don't want you to answer that right now because you know if you answered it out loud it would be a little awkward but maybe you could write it down on a piece of paper or take out your electronic, whatever you have, and just write it down. I don't know about you. I, I text myself sometimes, and so maybe you could text it yourself or, or put it in your notes. Uh, for some of you, you know, it's really easy to come up with what it is that you're having a hard time trusting God with. For some of you, it could be your present situation right now. For some of you, it could be your kids. It could be their future, your future. You, you don't know what your future holds, right? Uh, for some of you, you wake up every day battling anxiety, battling fear, and, and you have a hard time believing that bad things are not going to happen to you today. Um, and and you, you just have a hard time believing that God is for you, that God is with you, that He has good things in store for you. For others, it could be, you know, money. One of the reasons that the Bible talks more about money than any other subject is because it's the hardest thing to trust anyone else with. It causes the highest rate of divorce. I trust you, God, but I just can't quite release it. For others, it's that addiction that you've been trying, you think you can handle, but truth be told, you, you really can't. What is it? I, I want you to write it out and call it out, not out loud, but call it out, just whatever it is, recognize what it is. And, and here's the thing, I deeply believe this is a, a step of honesty that is the beginning of liberation. Jesus says that, you know, the truth of God will set us free. It's what God wants for us. It, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And yet so many of us, we are living in our own created prison, holding back and hiding things from God, which quite frankly, He already knows that we're keeping from Him. And so I want to tell you that when I was going over this message and working through it, I was asking myself this question, right? What is it in my life right now that I'm having a hard time releasing to God? What is it in, in my life right now that I'm having a hard time just trusting God fully with? And I'll be honest with you, um, I look back at my life and it's everything. Everything in my life I've had at some point or another, I've had a hard time trusting and releasing God with it fully. I think about when I was single and I had a hard time believing that God had somebody for me, a significant other, that I was going to eventually get married. I had a hard time, really hard struggle. I remember when I was going through financial difficulties in my life and I had a hard time believing that God was going to get me through that. I, I remember... Um, I had a hard time with uh, struggling with so many things in my life, so many things. And I, I want to share with you something that I'm having a hard time right now, trusting God with fully. 
if I'm going to be completely honest, I'm in process right now. I can identify exactly what it is. And to tell you what it is, is that it is with this church, with you all. I, I've been leading this church now throughout Vineyard for the past four years, and I've been serving in ministry as a, as a pastor for over 20 years. And I absolutely love what God is doing among us and in us. And I love what God is doing with you all. And I want you to know that when you stop me and you share with me or you send me your texts or your emails and you let me know what's going on in your life or, or what to pray for, I absolutely, I want you to know that I don't just like nod, okay, that's it. No, I take it and I take it with, it, it, you know, it's on me emotionally. I take it home with me and I, I care and I love what God is doing. I love you all. I care about you all. And, and so I, I think about this and, and God, I feel like is dealing with me about that. Like, Abdi, you think that you are more necessary than you really are. And, and he's working with me and reminding me what, you know, it's a news flash to me, but you, I'm sure, already knew that this is not my church. This is God's church. And he loves this church and loves his people. He loves you all more than I do. And he cares about you all more than I do. And he dreams about you all more than I do. And, and so I'm in this process where I'm saying, God, uh, I love what you're doing here. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting to a place where I'm understanding that I am not necessary here. And it's a hard thing for me to even say, but I, I'm in this journey of really letting God take over this place. And I, and I want to challenge you, whatever it is in your life, whatever it is you wrote down or you texted to yourself, I want you to have a, just a, a gut level, uh, courageous, honest moment where you talk to God about it. And I want to encourage you to do something about it and give it to God. And so how do we as a church, how do we personally develop a wholehearted trust in God? I want to spend the rest of our time together speaking on that. I, I want to help us do this. How do we do this? Well, I want to go back to that verse that I utterly misquoted at the beginning, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, because I believe there's a lot of truth here for us to learn. And so Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, um, would you read it with me as it comes up on the big screen? It says this, it says, Trust in the Lord with how much? Do you see that there? All your heart, your whole heart, right? Lean not on your own understanding. In how many ways? Do you see that there? In how many ways? In all of your ways, every single one of your ways, in every single struggle, in your job, in, in every single, in your neighborhood, in your hobbies, in all your ways, the Bible says, you know, submit to Him. Other translations say acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. And so to apply the scripture in our lives, we have to understand what it means. And so I want to look at that a little more. And I think the most important word in this passage is the word submit. Submit. In all your ways, submit or acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. That word submit is the Hebrew word yada. Yada. And can you say that actually? Yada. Yada. Not Yoda, not baby Yoda. No, it's Yada. And what it means is, it means coming to know and submit by observing, reflecting, and experiencing. Coming to know by observing, reflecting, and experiencing. Trusting in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Every thing about your life in all of your ways you come to know and you submit by observing by reflecting and experiencing Christ then he will make your path straight he will not bring order to the chaos of your life until you yada him until you know him and here's the thing this know is it's it's this word to know God here, the word used is not like an intellectual. It's not simply just to know that two plus two equals four. This is a totally different Hebrew word. For it, it, this Hebrew word yada, it, for know is the same word used in Genesis where Adam yada, he knew Eve and Eve bore him a child. And it's not sexual, it's intimate, it's closeness. It's experiential knowledge that's based on the context of covenant and relationship. When we yada God like that, 
God, I know you. I know your heart for me. I know your grace for me. I know that I can trust you more than I can even trust myself. When I know him in that way, it takes the decisions of my lives it, it takes it, he takes the decision of my life and this the mistakes that i've made and the the crookedness of uh, my journey and he makes it straight when i yada him when i know him and here's what's funny is that we have a tendency to to tell god well god i want you to prove yourself first and then i'll trust you right you you have to do this first because then i will know that i can trust you we kind of need like a guarantee first. And God, I want you to prove to me your faithfulness so that then I can trust you. Don't we do that? Don't, don't we kind of do that? Like, God, please, God, if you would just help me land this promotion, God, if it, or if you would just help me land this new account, then I'm going to serve you. Then I can know that you're kind of with me where I'm at, God. Okay, God, uh, you know, I'm thinking about tithing, but I got to know that when I tithe, I'm going to win the scratch-off lottery ticket the moment I make my first tithe. If you can guarantee that, God, I know that then I can tithe. If it can make it happen, then I can trust you, God. I, wanna, I want you to prove yourself so that then, God, I can trust you. The only problem with that is that it's not the way that God works. It's just not the way God works. And it's a good thing to know that that's not the way God works because it reminds us that we're not God and we can't control God and it's also an invitation to know him and know the way he works and it's an invitation to higher to a higher way of living a different way this is the way God works and the way that God works is different than the way we as humans work right well how does he work how does God do this he wants us to trust him first if you're taking notes, this is, this is awesome. You trust him first so that he can prove himself faithful. It takes faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Faith is the confidence in what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about the things that we cannot see. You have to believe in that which you cannot prove so that it releases God to do what we cannot see. And what we can never do so you believe in god even when you can't see it so that god can then do the supernatural we trust in faith and then god responds miraculously faith always comes first can you say that with me faith always comes first it always comes first right? Why does it always come first? Because it is impossible to please God without faith. Did you hear me? It's impossible to please God. It's impossible. Faith always comes first. You know, the African animal called the, the African impala, uh, we're going to show you a picture of it right here. It's an interesting animal because it can jump 10 feet high 10 feet high that's from here to the ceiling right 10 feet high and it can actually it running it can run and when it jumps it can run it can jump a distance of 30 feet but what's interesting about this impala is that it can be contained in any zoo with a simple three foot solid wall do you know why because the African impala will never jump unless it knows where its feet are going to land first. And because it can't see where its feet are going to land, it doesn't jump. It doesn't trust that they can make, make it over that three-foot wall. And I thought about, isn't that the way many of us live our lives? And so here's a challenge for the next 48 hours. After you watch this, the next 48 hours, whatever you wrote down, whatever your issue is, if it's your finances, if it's with your kids, whatever it is, I want you to take a step of in the next 48 hours of releasing it to God. The moment you do that, you're going to discover three things about God. 
three things about God. And if you want, you can write these down. I think they're awesome. Number one, the first thing you're going to discover about God is His goodness. You're going to discover the moment you step out in faith and you believe and you give Him your whole heart and you give Him your whole life, you're going to discover the goodness of God. You're going to get to know. Yada. You're going to know God's goodness. The second thing, and you can write this down, is that you're going to know God's love. And the third thing is you're going to know God's faithfulness. Where did I get this from? The scriptures in the book of Psalms, chapter 100, verses 3 or five, um, three through 5. All of this is right here in the scripture. It says this, Know, yada, that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. Can you say those three words there? We are His with me together. We're, let's say it together. We are His his we are his you belong to him i belong to him we are his people the sheep of his pasture enter his gates therefore with thanksgiving and his courts with praise give thanks to him and praise his name for the lord is good you're going to get to know the goodness of god right and his love endures forever you're going to get to know the love of god and his Faithfulness continues through all generations. It's not even just about your life. It's about your children's children. It's about the next generation, right? It's, it's about when you trust God with your whole heart, when you trust God with your whole life, your great-great-grandchildren are going to be different because of the heritage of faith that you started. His faithfulness continues through generations when I trust Him, when I step out in faith and I believe in Him. And so hidden in this verse is the key to slaying that unbelief. Hidden in this verse is the key to slaying that fear, that hesitation that is holding us back from fully trusting in God. What is that? It's these words right here. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Those four words. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. See, we are his sheep, and he is our shepherd. I want to ask you, do you know in the Old Testament how often the sheep would enter his gates, would go into the temple? The, they would only happen one time a year. And there was one purpose that the sheep would enter into the gate of the city and go to the temple. And you know what it was for? It was because they were about to be sacrificed. The purpose was sacrifice. The Bible says that if we're his sheep and we're to enter the, his gates with thanksgiving, but the sheep enter the gate to be sacrificed, how does that, why would I want to come with, it with thanksgiving? How is that enjoyable? Why would I want to come with thanksgiving for that? How is that even possible that I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to be sacrificed? Because when you yada, when you know God, your life becomes a living sacrifice. And every part of you belongs to Him. Nothing is off limits. And when you do, you will get to know the goodness of God. When you do, you'll get to know the love of God. And when you do, you'll get to know the enduring faithfulness of God. Therefore, we enter His gates with thanksgiving because you're going to know God on a whole different level. I'm going to enter His courts with praise because I'm going to know God on a faith level that I didn't know Him before. I'm going to know God on a goodness level that I didn't know Him before. I'm going to know God on a love level that I didn't know Him before. You can finally trust Him when you yada, when you know Him. You can even trust Him more than you trust yourself. Would you pray with me? Father, we just want to say thank you for the miracle of your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that helps bring us understanding and application. And I pray in this moment that you would give us courage to be honest with ourselves and with you about what we're holding back from full surrender to you. And as we're in an attitude of prayer today, I, I want to talk first to those of you who are followers of Jesus. You know, you're saying, you know, I am somewhat certain I believe in God. I'm, I'm a follower, right? But I have one area of my life that I'm holding back from really giving it over to God. And I, I just want to remind us about the dad story I read to you earlier where Jesus, he goes and he brings his son to Jesus and his words where he tells Jesus, God, I do believe, 
but would you help me overcome my unbelief? Maybe you're not even yet at a point where you've got the courage to fully release it to God, right? You're, you're a little bit before. Maybe you're, you're here and your prayer is, God, I, I need you to give me the faith in this area so that I can give it to you. Help me overcome my unbelief in this area. If that's your prayer, I'm just going to invite you right now just to type that in the chat. Say, that's me. Just type those words, those two words, that's me, in the chat. And I want to pray for you. Let's pray together. Father, we just want to say that we're sorry for not trusting you fully. We believe that you are powerful. We believe that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that you have a purpose for our lives. And that we can trust you with every area of our life. We believe. But God, help us. Help us. Would you help us overcome our lack of faith in trusting you in these areas, God, that you're bringing to our minds, to our hearts. Thank you in advance, God, for what we're going to experience as we learn to release it to you and trust you with our whole heart. And even as we continue to pray today, we're talking about total surrender. You know, oftentimes in worship, you see people raise up their hands. And it's a physical act of an inward posture, right? God, uh, this is what I'm doing. I'm giving you total surrender. I surrender it to you. And so my question is, does that define your relationship with him? Total surrender. For some of you, it's more, yeah, I kind of am a church goer. I'm definitely a believer in God, but I don't know that I've ever given him my whole heart, my whole life. You see, the Bible says that every single one of us have blown it and we've sinned. Our sin, because God is holy, it separates us forever from God. And there's nothing that I could do that you could do that would ever make a way back to God by our good works, by living a good life, by sinning less. There's nothing. It is impossible. And in the midst uh, of this bad news, right, that we could not be made right with God in and of ourselves, a good God sent the good news who was Jesus, who lived, and the Bible says, a sinless life. And he was tortured beyond what any human should ever have to bear. And the Bible says he was nailed to a cross to pay a sin debt that was not on him. It was yours to pay. But he said, no, in his love, you know what, I'm going to pay it for you. I'm going to pay what you can't afford for the hope that you would one day say yes, for the hope that you would say, you know what, I receive this. I receive and I can be forgiven of my sin. Yes. And I want you to make no mistake, for those of you who are about to pray and surrender your heart to Jesus, this is not, you know, I feel bad for what I did this weekend. No, this is, I want to surrender every part of my life from this moment, from this time that I, I, I just want to give it all to God. I do not belong to just myself anymore. I'm surrendering everything to God. It's not about me anymore. It's about the one who loves me. It's the one, about the one who died for me and he has a purpose for my life. If that's your prayer, I'm just going to boldly ask you to write in the chat, I believe, those two words. I believe. Just type that in the chat. And what we're going to do is all of us, because we believe here at DV, no one prays alone. We're all going to pray together this prayer together, okay? We're going to pray this. So would you repeat this prayer with me? Say, Father, I need you. I have sinned, and I'm asking you to save me. Jesus, I believe you died on a cross. You didn't deserve to pay for my sin, but I receive your grace. I surrender my life. Fill me with your spirit and I could serve you always. In Jesus' name I pray. Come on, let's celebrate and welcome those who have said yes to Jesus for the first time. And I want to let you know that as your church, we are celebrating with you. There is no greater decision than you can make than to say, yes, God, I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my Savior in my life. I want you to save me. I want you to forgive me. That is awesome. And so as your church, we're celebrating with you. And we want to let you know that we want to help you. And so there's a next step that you can take after you said this prayer, which is a big step. And so the next step that you can take is if you haven't yet, I'm going to encourage you to write in that chat, I believe those two words because we want to follow up with you and we want to send you a free resource that we believe will help you take your next step after you've taken this one so boldly. 
and we don't want you to take this journey alone. We want to do it with you and I want to invite you to come back next week and watch this broadcast. You can watch it again and again and again this week and then watch the, the new one that's coming out on Sunday and invite a friend because this is a little piece of heaven that you are experiencing and it's not fair just to keep it to yourself. Let's share it and have others experience what God wants to do in their life as well. And so I also, I want to give you an opportunity as well. If you need prayer for any reason at all, we would love to pray with you, pray for you. There's a number that's coming up on the screen right now that is going to invite you. You can call that number. You can text that number. We have people standing by right now that would love to pray with you. Would you call that number? Would you text that number? That way we can step out and pray with you and believe God with you. And so we, we want to do that. Also, we want to also give you an opportunity if you want to give back to the ministry here. There are a bunch of ways that are going to come up on the screen now of the ways you can give. You can give by text, you can give by the Cash App, you can give by Zelle, and you can also go to our website, DoralVineyard.org, to see all those ways you can give and even give right there on the website. You can feel free to do that. And I want to pray for you. I want to pray a blessing over your life. I want to pray over those of you that are giving. I want to pray over any needs that you might have in this moment. And so I'm going to invite you to please stretch out your hands to me. And I'm going to stretch my hands out to you. And we believe this is just a simple act of faith that God is going. That this is what we do, right? We believe, therefore we act. And God responds. This is what we're talking about today. This is how we trust Him fully. We believe, we act, and let God do His thing. And so may the Lord bless you today. May the Lord keep you. May, he's, and may His face surround you as a shield of favor. May He protect you today. May He fill you with hope to overflow so that you can give that hope away to as many as you meet today and as many as you meet this week. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you, and remember, be a miracle. Have a good week.